our conscious experiences of the world around us and of ourselves within it are kinds of controlled hallucinations that happen with, through, and because of our living bodies. Let me give you a couple of examples of all this. In the rubber hand illusion, a person's real hand is hidden from view, and that fake rubber hand is placed in front of them. Then both hands are simultaneously stroked with a paintbrush while the person stares at the fake hand. Now, for most people, after a while, this leads to the very uncanny sensation that the fake hand is in fact part of their body. And the idea is that the congruence between seeing touch and feeling touch on an object that looks like a hand and is roughly where a hand should be is enough evidence for the brain to make its best guess that the fake hand is in fact part of the body. Here's one more example, which shows just how quickly the brain can use new predictions to change what we consciously experience. Have a listen to this. Now listen to this. I think Brexit is a really terrible idea. <laughs> Now listen to the first sound again. I'm just going to replay it. I think Brexit is a really terrible idea. Yeah. So you can now hear words there. Once more for luck. Okay, so what's going on here is is the, the remarkable thing is the sensory information coming into the brain hasn't changed at all. Instead of perception depending largely on signals coming into the brain from the outside world, it depends as much, if not more, on perceptual predictions flowing in the opposite direction. We don't just passively perceive the world; we actively generate it. So our experiences of the world around us and ourselves within it—well, they're kinds of controlled hallucinations that have been shaped over millions of years of evolution to keep us alive in worlds full of danger and opportunity. We predict ourselves into existence. Let me give you one more example of perception as this active, constructive process. In this panoramic video, we've processed the footage using an algorithm based on Google's Deep Dream to simulate the effects of overly strong perceptual predictions. In this case, to see dogs, the result looks very much like the kinds of hallucinations people might report in altered states, or perhaps even in psychosis. Now, think about this for a minute. If, if hallucination is a kind of uncontrolled perception. Then perception, right here and right now, is also a kind of hallucination, but a controlled hallucination in which the brain's predictions are being reined in by sensory information from the world. In fact, we're all hallucinating all the time, including right now. It's just that when we agree about our hallucinations, we call that reality.